Zach Eady and Matt Painter look for Purdue's first national championship, and they'll try and do it against the defending champion, UConn Huskies. Get the latest takes before the game, plus Caitlin Clark's legacy. You're in the right place right here on Locked On Big Ten. You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Welcome to Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Sheep. Coming up on 40 years as a sports talk show host and play-by-play announcer. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Plus on YouTube. It's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. Well, the Boilermakers are going to give it a shot for their one shining moment against UConn tonight, plus Caitlin Clark's legacy and our top 10 observations from the Big Ten this weekend. Let's start with the Purdue Boilermakers right now. It's a big one tonight, man, the Boilermakers. They lifted a lot of heavy monkeys off of their backs Saturday when they beat North Carolina State 63-50 to in that game in the Final Four on Saturday. Now they get the pleasure of playing the defending national champion Connecticut Huskies tonight, Monday night for a national championship. The Boilermakers amazing run through March and April has quieted a lot of whispers that they couldn't win in March, right? They quieted the naysayers that were quick to point out how Matt Painter and the Boilermakers were always good enough to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. They were good enough to get to Final Fours. They were good enough to win national championships, but they had this unfortunate knack for getting bounced early in the NCAA tournament to teams with double-digit seeds. Much, Many of them were not nearly as good as Purdue. Of course, the worst was last year's, the, the, the one versus 16 embarrassment when they lost to Fairleigh Dickinson. Now, it would have been ironic had they lost to North Carolina State on Saturday because that was a double-digit seeded team. They were seeded 11th, but it was in the Final Four, so they avoided that little piece of irony and history uh, with that win. Now, Purdue played very well, and I got to say, they they played as well as they could against a North Carolina State team. I got to give them credit. That was the best defensive scheme I've seen against the Boilermakers all season. North Carolina State's guards picked up the Boilermakers at half court. Uh, When the guards were bringing the ball across the court, picked them up right there at half court, caused them to stretch their offense, make it a little harder just to lob it into Zach Eady because they're starting from further back. And, uh, you know, they can't just hand it off to their 7-4 center in the the block anymore. Then uh, once the ball got down to Eady in the block, North Carolina State, this is the second part, the second thing they did really well. They did a great job collapsing on them so that a guy behind them, like a wall, and then uh, other people would come down and scratch and try and knock that ball away anytime he brought the ball down below his waist. Did a great job there. Uh, But in the end, North Carolina State had no offense whatsoever outside of D.J. Horn. And the boiler defense had something to do with that. And North Carolina State went on numerous scoring droughts in that game. Look, if Purdue's going to hold you to 50, Purdue's probably not going to lose that game, like almost ever. I don't think they're going to hold UConn to 50 points tonight here on Monday night for the championship, so they will have their work cut out for them. This should be a little more uh, a little more high scoring, if you will. UConn over the weekend pulled away from a tough Alabama team. Alabama was the highest scoring team in the country. By the way, Purdue's ranked 10th, uh, but UConn pulled away from Alabama with an 86-72 win and earned their second straight spot in the NCAA final. Now, some think, myself included, that this year's UConn team is better than last year's UConn team that won it all. Just the development of UConn sophomore Donovan Klingon. He's 7-2. We all know about 7-4 Zach Eady for Purdue. Well, UConn's got a big man, too. And he's 7-2, and he'll be the first opponent that can physically hold his own against Zach Eady. Uh, Klingon is a better athlete than Eady and a better shooter. And it'll be like the good old days when I was growing up, when you would have just seven-footers banging, going against it, going against each other for a national championship. 
That's that style of basketball seems to have uh, gone by the wayside. Uh, he will have a lot of help clinging. Will UConn had five players scoring double figures against Alabama on Saturday night. That's their deal. They're a balanced team. All right. They're led by uh, Stefan Castle, who scored 21. Guy's a 6'6 freshman guard. Tristan Newton, Cam Spencer, they both combined for six three pointers in that game. And they're both experienced seniors. So they have a mixture of. Uh, experience. They've got new kids that are developing with the freshmen. They're helping out right away. They can hit you inside. They can hit you outside. This is the most balanced team in all of college basketball. And they have been all season, just consistent and steady as they go. Matt Painter and Purdue will have their hands full trying to decide who to focus on to shut down. They won't be able to shut all of them down. Overall, Purdue guard Braden Smith going to have to play a lot better, a lot better than he did on Saturday. If you, if you haven't watched much Purdue basketball, that's not how he plays. He's usually pretty good. The Wolfpack perimeter defense really bothered him. He was just one of nine from the field, and that one was a three-pointer. He was one of five from three land. That was the only three points he scored all night. He had five turnovers on that night. Clearly his worst game of the season, and UConn will pick up on that. They'll focus on that. I wouldn't be surprised to see UConn pick him up at half court when he's bringing the ball across. I mean, heck, he had two over and backs, too. He just never does that. That's not him. He was, he was, trust me, he was good this year. If you're not a Boilermaker fan, I mean, trust me, he was good. He was first team all Big Ten. You know, there's only five guys that make it. Uh, he and Zach Eady were two of the five. He's pretty good. Just had a bad, bad night. So I think he'll bounce back Monday tonight, Monday night for this game. Like good players who have off nights, everybody has an off night. He still did other things well. Eight rebounds, six assists, and helped Purdue win the basketball game. Purdue gets this monkey off its back, getting to the Final Four and finding its way to the championship game. Now we'll see if they can win their first ever national championship in men's basketball. They hadn't been to a Final Four since 1980. And they haven't been to a national championship game since their only other visit in 1969. So together, uh, Matt Painter and Zach Eady, of course, um, they will uh, will try and make a little history for the Purdue Boilermakers against the most balanced team in all of college basketball. Like I said, they've got their work cut out for them. We'll see how they do. Uh, I'm going to enjoy this one, the battle of the big men in this game. It's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I know you guys will enjoy it as well. Of course, on tomorrow's podcast, Lockdown Big Ten, we'll be all over it, checking it out right here and uh, talking to you about it as well. I want to take a moment just to point something out, because as you know, we've been doing this podcast since uh, late June, early July. All right, We took over. We had 1,200 subscribers, and now we're like moving our way to 7,500. By the way, subscribe. It'll help us out audience is growing each and every day. But one of the things I said, I said, look, uh, I want, I, I, I know a lot of SEC people that always say, hey, it just means more. And we chant SEC. I said, look, the big 10 can be every bit as good and better than them. The big 10 can be the premier conference in all of college athletics. And you think about it. They're the defending national champion in football. The Iowa Hawkeyes women's team gets to the final. They were runners up. Purdue is in the final tonight. I don't, did you see any SEC teams in there in the mix? I don't, I don't, right? So we'll see tonight. Maybe the Boilermakers will get their one shining moment and uh, stick it to everybody, SEC included. Um, Big 10 is the place to be. And that means locked on Big 10 is the place to be. So if you haven't yet, subscribe. That helps us. That helps you. We're all on the same team, all on the same page, rooting for the same conference. And uh, you can follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. Don't want you to miss out on any of that. Caitlin Clark, her career is now over. Going to go to the WNBA. What is her legacy? I will tell you. That is coming up next right here on Locked On Big Ten. Hey, do you own a small business? Are you a manager? Maybe you got an office to run. What's the biggest difficulty you have? It's, it's like when somebody leaves or you got to fill a position, right? That's why you need LinkedIn jobs. You don't have time to do all that and collecting resumes and interviewing people. Let's make it as easy as we can with LinkedIn jobs. They have the tools 
to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates that are just in your lap, all right? They got all these professionals, all billions of professionals are on LinkedIn. It's not just another job board, but it's the best place to, uh, to find people to hire. And it gives you access to professionals you won't find anywhere else. It's so easy. In fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. By tomorrow, boom, you're good. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and you just might not have the time or the resources to hire people. They're constantly finding ways to make the process easier. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. So uh, disappointed for the Iowa Hawkeyes. We're going to get into them in just a moment and Caitlin Clark's career. But first I'm going to invite you one more time to go ahead and subscribe to locked on big 10 and uh, share, follow, and like Lockdown Big Ten, your team every day. And thank you for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen each and every day, especially your everydayers out there. All right, so before Sunday's game, one last word in the locker room by Lisa Bluter to her Iowa Hawkeye basketball team. She said, look, don't, don't underestimate um, your, your, your inner source of strength and power and what you can do as they got ready to get ready to take on the South Carolina Gamecocks for a national championship. Caitlin Clark coming off the win against Utah says, man, I don't, I don't need any motivation. This is the last game of my career. I'm going all out. And in the end, sadly, it wasn't enough, but that doesn't mean it wasn't impressive along the way. You got to take your hat off to the Gamecocks of South Carolina. They were just better. They were just better and a little bit deeper. And uh, they deserve to win. And that doesn't mean that Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes didn't have an awesome season. And it doesn't mean that Caitlin Clark's legacy is tarnished in any way. We'll get into this. A lot of people are talking about this. But let's talk about the game first. Hawkeyes started out on fire. It was 10-0 like that. Kate Martin's hitting shots. Caitlin's hitting threes. Then it was like 13-2. It was one stretch. Caitlin scored 13 straight points for the Iowa Hawkeyes, including 30-foot bombs from three land. There was a bit of a problem early on for the South Carolina game. They were uh, they were guarding Kalen. Kalen was getting fouled on three pointers, getting three free throws. Happened twice in the first quarter. You should never commit a foul on somebody twenty five feet away from the basket. And they just they didn't know. You don't. That's not normal to have to go guard somebody out that far away from the basket. But they did. They committed fouls. She was in the act of shooting. She got a lot of free throws. By the time the first media timeout happened, the game was twenty to nine. And, um, but, um, in fact, Caitlin Clark, Clark had an amazing, amazing first quarter, but the Gamecocks look, they're too good. They were undefeated. They're good for a reason. They uh, pulled out an 11, two run and they cut it to two. Uh, so they didn't just sit down. Clark though, had 18 points in the first quarter, including another late deep three. She had three, three pointers in that first quarter and it was 27, 20 Hawkeyes at the end of the quarter. Along the way, she reached another milestone. Shocker. I didn't know there were any left to get, but apparently Shamika Holtzclaw had the most points in NCAA tournament history. Caitlin Clark passed her on that. So now I think she owns every record there is. So the Gamecocks were warming up, all right? They scored a 7-0 run to start the second quarter. They tied a game at 27. With about 4.55 to go in the half, Camilla Cordoso, great player, uh, she had a layup, and that gave the Gamecocks their first lead of the game at 36-34. Uh, Cordoso also finished with 15 points and 17 rebounds. She's uh, She was the one that announced this week going into these games that she also is going to go pro and be eligible for the WNBA draft next week. So uh, at the end of the second, uh, Tahina Pow Pow, she hits another. Uh, she hits a three-pointer. So Iowa gets the ball. I think they're going to run out the clock and hit the last shot of the half. But then Raven Johnson stole the ball from Caitlin Clark at the end of the half, turns into a layup. All of a sudden, they go in the locker room up three. It's their biggest lead of the game after that horrendous start by South Carolina. Great start by the Hawkeyes. Going into the locker room at the half, South Carolina's up 49-46. to 46. So they had that three-point lead. Clark, who scored 18 points in the first quarter, only three in the second quarter. Again, I mentioned Raven Johnson. 
did a great job defensively. They had her guard her, literally guarded her face the whole time. Um, so that was a great job by her. So South Carolina's in it. Iowa knows they're in a dogfight. Second half starts, and the Gamecocks open up with a 6-0 run like that. Ultimately, they're up by nine. Lisa Bluter has to call timeout. Got to reset. This is not how they wanted to come out of the locker room. So um, then Clark, Caitlin Clark, instead of just launching bombs, she starts working it inside a little bit, trying to drive to the hoop, trying to draw something, making passes underneath in the lane like she does just as well as anybody ever. And they go on a little 9-2 run, and they cut it to four. But then Bree Hall hits a three to give the Gamecocks a 10-point lead with 2.30 to go in the third. That capped an 8-0 run at that point. And uh, Tessa Johnson, she bombed into three. That put the Gamecocks up by 11 with a minute to go in the third. It's starting to feel like, oops, this thing's getting out of hand. Lisa Bluter calls another timeout for Iowa. Heading into the final quarter, Gamecocks led 68-59, to had a nine-point lead. It was feeling a little touchy right there. You, you know the – Hawkeyes would make one more run at least. But then South Carolina, they keep going. They open up, they open up their lead to a game high, 13 points at this point. You're thinking, wow, this doesn't happen very often to the uh, Hawkeyes, but they dug down deep, went on an eight, nothing run at that point, And they cut it to six. That's two possessions with six and a half minutes to go. So now you're thinking, okay, one break here or there. And they think this thing, can, this can happen. Caitlin Clark and Gabby Marshall, both bomb threes. It's 76-70 at this point. Iowa got it to five with three and a half minutes to go. But that would be as close as they get. Uh, South Carolina answered that. They stopped the bleeding, and they were able to win the game 87-75. to That was the final. Dawn Staley and uh, the South Carolina Gamecocks, that is their third title, third one in school history. USC becomes the 10th undefeated champion in women's college basketball. So it was a, a fantastic job. So a little mini dynasty going there for South Carolina. Meanwhile, that is the end, sadly, of Caitlin Clark's career. We could talk about her legacy a little bit. We all do. Some want to say that she cannot be considered the greatest of all time because she never won a title. She got to two national championships, but came up short in both of them. Uh, I will say this. She is the best player I've ever seen. And she got a lot of people watching women's basketball this year. Uh, even Coach Don Staley took some time uh, in her postgame comments while her team was celebrating the national championship. Uh, some very classy remarks about Clark. She said, uh, what she did for the sport. Uh, she she lifted the sport. She got more eyeballs on the sport, and she wanted to acknowledge that. Clark was asked about her legacy before the game. Hey, if you don't get a championship, what uh, you what's your legacy here? And she said, look, I don't want my legacy to be what I did or whatever happens in one last 40-minute game. It's what I did, my body of work over four years, and it's what I did for the sport along the way. And I think ultimately that is what she will be remembered for in college basketball. as She now moves on to the WNBA and uh, we'll talk more about that in just a second. I want to talk about ratings though. And this is what she has done for the sport. I don't know what the ratings were for Sunday. Yes. We'll find that out sometime today, maybe tomorrow. I'm sure it was astronomical. She's must see TV Friday night's nail butter biter against UConn that drew 14 million viewers that set a record for women's basketball on ESPN, which uh, broke the record that they set on Monday night in the elite eight against LSU in which 12.3 million people watch last year's national championship game, Iowa versus LSU that drew 10 million. That was the record. Then this is all Caitlin Clark. Although I will tell you there, are, I think there are great storylines with a lot of other players at LSU and South Carolina and Southern Cal. But, you know, people find that out because they're watching to see Caitlin Clark and then they see this other great talent. And we'll see if some of this can now move on to the WNBA with any interest there. For those of you that went to the game uh, in person in Cleveland, the average ticket price for that national championship game yesterday was a record $481. It's a record for a women's game. So up next... Caitlin Clark and Camilla Cordoso and others they will enter the WNBA draft. That is next week. That's a quick turnaround. That is on uh, the 15th of April tax day, WNBA draft day as well in 
Brooklyn. And of course, Caitlin Clark is expected to be the first pick of the draft by the Indiana Fever. All right. I'll be watching. Speaking of what you watch, do you watch daytime talking head pundit TV on Fox Sports or ESPN? I know it's hard to. It's all uh, talking over each other and yelling and screaming and shouting. Sometimes you just got to turn the volume down. Did you know that there is Locked On Sports Today? 24-7 free sports streaming channel program for you to bring uh, bring you the latest, the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, which we talk about all the time here. It's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, You know, if you're a regular to our podcast, you know that on Mondays, we always like to collect our top 10 observations from the weekend, Big Ten Top 10 observations. We'll share those, see if mine match yours. Uh, What impressed you? That's coming up next right here on Lockdown Big Ten. Time now for our Big Ten Top Ten Observations from the weekend. I'm going to put it on screen. If you're audio only, we will describe it in detail for you. And a uh, pretty interesting list. It's Believe me, it's basketball-centric because that's what we got going on right now. All right. At uh, number 10, I put the Purdue Boilermakers in the win over North Carolina State, 63-50. to 50. Um, Again, getting to the Final Four, winning a game, getting to the National Championship, monkey off the back of the Purdue Boilermakers. We're going to put them in at number 10 on our list. Also, the Purdue defense at number nine, which held North Carolina State to uh, 50 points and 36% shooting on the night. Look, uh, Purdue, if they hold you to 36%, and uh, you only score fifty. They're gonna they're gonna win a lot of those those games, right? I mean, let's face it. That's that's what's gonna happen. That's what did happen. All right. What else we have here at number eight? Uh, the Purdue three pointers in that game against NC State. Lance Jones and Fletcher Lawyer combining for seven three pointers in that game. They made ten three pointers on the night. The Boilermakers did again. North Carolina State was doing a pretty good job getting down there on Zach Eady, and if Purdue can hit a couple of threes. They're almost unbeatable. So number seven, I do want to mention Zach Eady uh, on the night. This is, again, against North Carolina State, 20 points and 12 rebounds. Just fought through it. And, yeah, it seemed like it was kind of an off night for him because North Carolina State did a good job on him defensively. But even – see, this just means that Zach Eady falls out of bed and he's going to do 20 and 12. I mean, even on a on – a, I don't want to say his worst night because it was not his worst game. I'm just saying just automatic. That's That's the base. So if you can hold Zach, you can have a chance. If you hold him in the lower 20s, you got a shot. North Carolina State just didn't score any points. They did their job defensively. It's when Zach Eady scores 30 and 35 and 40, you got no chance. Uh, we'll see what uh, what UConn holds him to here on Monday night. Number six, Iowa beating UConn on Friday night, 71 to 69. I want to point out that all the controversy about the moving screen that was called by Ilya uh, Edwards. It was a moving screen. It was a foul. It should have been called a foul. It was called a foul. That's it. These people that say, oh, you got to swallow a whistle. It's the end of the game. No, no, that was a foul. She's been doing it all night, honestly. I think she got called one other time for it. Whether it's the first quarter or the fourth quarter, you got to make that call. I'm sorry. Meanwhile, not sorry. And number five. Iowa's Caitlin Clark, the uh, second half versus UConn, really turning on. She had 21 points, nine rebounds, and seven assists in what turned out to be her last win of her career. At number four, we're going to give a shout-out to Hannah Stalke, who scored 23 points in that UConn game, nine of 12 shooting. They don't win that game without her. She is a sophomore. She had a game which we saw and talked about here on Lockdown Big Ten where she scored 47 points this year. She is a star in the making. When Caitlin Clark leaves next year, Hannah Stolke, who is a sophomore, will be a junior. I think she will fill the vacuum and be the star of that uh, and that focal point of that Iowa basketball team. And they're going to have to switch up a little bit. They're used to Caitlin Clark hitting logo bomb three pointers. Hannah Stolke is an inside player and she lives on the blocks and uh, scores a lot, scores a lot. And number three, Caitlin Clark, 18 points in the first quarter versus South Carolina in the national championship. That was the third coolest thing I saw this weekend. 
And at number two, I don't ever do this. This is a Big Ten top ten, but I'm going to give a shout out to the South Carolina Gamecocks at number two for winning the national championship. Again, uh, their freshmen are, are really good. Um, Raven Johnson holding Caitlin Clark. When she guarded Caitlin Clark, Caitlin scored seven of her 30 points. So maybe she should have guarded her more. And then number one, uh, Caitlin Clark, 30 points, five three-pointers, eight rebounds, five assists, her final game of a stellar career. I'm going to put her there at number one on our Big Ten Top Ten observations as uh, maybe a while before we see anybody like her ever again. But again, women's college basketball is in a good place right now, largely because of her getting a lot of eyeballs on the TV and people seeing that, hey, there's some other talent out here that's pretty fun to watch as well. So that's it. If you want to comment, many ways to hit me up uh, on Twitter or X at Talk Big 10, number 10. Don't forget comments on YouTube. If you want to go back and forth at each other a little bit, love to hear you there. And um, also our website, talkbig 10 number 10.com. Go there, uh, comment. Uh, communicate with us or just watch your favorite podcasts, uh, all of them that we've ever done in chronological order or group by school or team. If you're a Purdue fan, we got a Purdue section. If you're an Iowa fan, we got an Iowa section. You see any podcast that was like Iowa centric, uh, we'll, we'll put it there. Uh, so you can find it nice and easy. Plus you can also buy swag there, uh, shirts, hats, pennants, tickets. It's all right there. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this podcast. If you know somebody who's a Big Ten alum, tell them about us. We're here for you guys. Um, you can subscribe. I'm going to ask you to subscribe. We're growing that each and every day. And you can follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app. And you get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it's available each and every day. Our audio version is usually out about 4 a.m. Eastern. And um, our video is on YouTube or, uh, at 6 a.m little staggered today because i don't know if you know this or not we did two we did two podcasts we did one that was talking mostly about caitlin clark and iowa we did one mostly talk about purdue and tonight's national championship game so two for the price of one actually two for two not two for the price we did two podcasts for you here today check them out audio and video tell your friends about it and subscribe when you're done with this hit us up watch the other one watch the other lockdown right they're right next to each other on the list you can check it out another edition of lockdown big 10 uh, also don't forget to check out our friends, uh, from lockdown. They have their, uh, national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube called lockdown sports today. That's there for you each and every day as well. That'll do it. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. We'll know if Purdue is raising a championship banner at Mackey arena or not. Enjoy the game. Thanks for enjoying the podcast. I know I enjoyed it and I can't wait till we talk to you again next time. Uh, I'm Craig Sheeman for Lockdown Big Ten. We'll talk to you tomorrow.